So, Will, fresh from your individual silver medal from Hungary in the European yeah. Championships two or three weeks ago. Yeah. And the team <coughs> finishing fourth. Yeah. I want to ask you, for, I mean, this could go anywhere, folks. We are going to reminisce and, like, could go all off topic, but how does it feel you getting an individual medal and your teammates not getting a medal? What would you see in your outcome? Yeah, it's thing? not good. I, I mean, listen, mate, it's team. team all the way. Right, okay. Team all the way. Um, there's, there's always been a good atmosphere in the teams yeah, and, and, and a brilliant bunch of lads, but this current crop that we've got um, that have all come up through the youth scheme, uh, Cameron Hughes, yeah. just awesome. Yeah, mum. Um, obviously, James Dent. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Matt Goffrey, yeah. all speak for themselves. Yeah. Simon Willsmore's new in, um, yeah. but he's finding his feet, did brilliant. Fished his way into the team, did brilliant both days. Uh, Steve Emingray speaks for himself, one yeah. of the best all rounders that there is. Yeah. Myself. Um, so, you know, the atmosphere in the team was brilliant. Um, and like I say, you know, it's nice to get an individual medal more because you know that you've done your job yeah, for the yeah, team, yeah. but it's all about team, mate. Team. You just want to, you know, having won last year in Karush, a venue that you know very yeah, well. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but having won there with the team, it's just Brilliant. awesome, mate. And that's what we want to do. And that's why I think everybody in the team is striving and working hard to, to achieve more and more and more. Yeah, definitely. Before we get going, like, off topic, so I want to go back to, so... You're preparing for the European Championships. When do you start getting ready for it? When do you go out there and start doing your practice and all that? Go on, talk us through. Yeah, so for me, as you know, like as soon as I know where it is. I mean, for instance, we haven't had this year's World Championships yet. Next year's World Championships is in France. I know the venue. I know the right. depths. I know what fish we're fishing for. Oh, um, right, okay. I know that there's this event on on that date, and I, so that's already next year. Yeah, and that's what it's like. Right, okay. You know, already I've got videos and pictures on my phone of the, the canal in Holland where the Europeans is next year. We've only just come back from... So it starts, the ball starts rolling as soon as... As soon as you find out the As soon as it's or in your mind, you're, yeah. you're preparing yeah. um, mentally, you know, and, and, and obviously your gear um, and everything. But, you know, preparation for where we've just been, Lake de Cedar in Hungary... Um, you know, a good four weeks before. And would you have gone like previous to that to have a look at it, like last year or earlier this year? Anything so, or? no, it was a venue that I hadn't seen before. Right. But again, I've got some brilliant friends in yeah. Hungary, um, yeah, yeah. Tamas Walter, yeah. Sillard, and, you know, they're giving you information, sending you pictures and videos and this, that and the other. And it, uh, it, it, it's one of those, mate. And, you know, knowing that we were going for two weeks, knowing that the lake, I mean, it's eight kilometres long, this lake, it's absolutely oh, massive. massive. Just then. a beautiful place, you know. Um, full of fish, there's bleak, there's roach, rud, um, and a lot of skimmers, bream, odd carp, odd carasio. Yeah. So, you know, we knew we were going to a nice place. And again, you know, like the locals, um, good friend of mine, uh, Tamis's right hand man, Laszlo, he sorted out a meeting for us with the, the, like the head bailiff of the lake oh, who right, showed okay. us where to go, where we yeah. could fish, sorted our licenses out. You know, the, the, the hospitality when we go to these countries is Get second to none. After. Yeah, brilliant. absolutely brilliant. Um, so, yeah, it was just a, a brilliant two weeks practice, mate. Um, a little bit unlucky, you know, like being in Hungary, obviously you've got the Hungarians, going to be dangerous. They're an awesome team full of world-class anglers. You've got Slovakia, which isn't a million miles away. Yeah, yeah. Again, they ended up winning. Um, and obviously Poland very good at that and you know getting a medal is the ultimate goal yeah. winning it is the yeah, you know yeah. what you really sort of dream about yeah but again fourth out of 27 of the best countries in Europe it's, it's not, not a bad goal, result it's like you know pretty it's pretty not a bad result and and again we spoke about experience and I'm still gaining experience and even more importantly these youngsters these 30 year olds that we've got involved now uh, what you're all learning off each other and yeah we're all learning, learning off it. each oh, other it's and amazing. you know they're 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 just i can see it i've seen it over the over the years you know just getting better at this and better at this and better at that and more adapt at this and yeah. they've got this gear now and they're they're understanding and it's brilliant you know it really is brilliant we're all still learning and, and you know but at that level you know you fish at world level yeah. with the, the youth team mate yeah. and it's it's just different you know and the multitude of different tactics and this, that and the other and it's just, I take my hat off to them mate. 
and, and the best thing about it all, mate, is we're all mates. Yeah. And, you know, we have a laugh and a joke along the way. It's taken deadly serious. The management, obviously, Mark Downs, you fished. Oh, yeah. Love Downsy. You, Definitely yeah, you fished with him as, yeah. as, as your captain. And Darren Bickerton, we've got Nathan yeah. coming along um, with the support, the Angling Trust and that. Um, a sponsor would help. I'm not going to sit here and lie. Yeah, yeah, it would yeah. help. It costs on, me mate. a lot of my own money. Definitely. Um, but it's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and it's what I'm going to carry on doing. And again, we spoke off camera. The the domestic scene in England now, <clears throat> with you know the commercial scene, is frighteningly good. The money you can win, the competitions, um, the titles to put on your CV is brilliant. But you can't do both. You can't be an international angler and a top commercial angler. No. I tried for a year or two to do it. Yeah. You end up doing everything half-heartedly, preparation, practicing, and everything else. So ultimately it was a case of, for me, you know, don't get me wrong, from the end of September, right the way through to March, it's commercials for me. Yeah, Mum. I love fishing them. Yeah. You know, like you look here, you've got a nice path behind you, your car's just there. There's no joggers, cyclists, bikes, canoes, all this, all the outside influences. It's uh, why would you want to go anywhere else? That's it. I think uh, coming coming <clears> back <throat> to that, obviously that time of year, that's when obviously Silver's matches come to the fore and have yeah, proved yeah. so popular the last Massive. few years, haven't they? Massive. Some of the events now, like there's one that Gary Rogers is running uh, on the Flyer TV, that's like 15 grand to the winning. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. tell Will about yeah. that. Oh, no. no yeah, you didn't hear that, Will. No, no. <laughs> you didn't hear that. No, no, no. no. Cut that bit. <laughs> Start again. Cut that bit. Uh, but yeah, so just going like back to the, uh, obviously England, when you're, when you're over there and obviously you've got allocated your zones, when you're practicing, mm. are you all doing different things or do you do like same thing yeah. each, each Yeah, so, so again happening? in the past, you know, you've probably been a little bit guilty of the England team of almost fishing for your place. Yeah. Um, you can see you're going there competing against each other, you're trying to beat each other and that yeah. isn't the best way to practice. The, the sort of mindset that Mark's got now um, we practice, we try different things, right, okay. different mixes, different distances, different amounts, everything, you know, it's covered. And, then and everyone in the team, and this is the best thing, everyone in the team is more than willing to sort of fall on their sword and say, right, I'll do that. Right. I'll fish, you know, with that ground bait at that distance and see if it's wrong, right. And, and at the end of the day, if you fish different you know, whether it's a distance, whether it's a mix, whether it's volume of bait, whether it's size of float, hook, this. If you all fish different, that night at the meeting, you can draw conclusions. Right. What you find is if you're fishing for your place on the Monday, someone will go there and do this with that ground bait at that distance and win. And then everyone tries to perfect just doing that, not trying something different. Right. And, you know, I think, you know, since that, and, and Mark's, a brilliant manager, you know, man manager, tactician, just just awesome. Yeah, mum, definitely. You know, um, and his sort of mindset is you're not fishing for your team. You're there to experiment. And then I will pick, not me, but Mark, he will pick the, the five out of the six anglers that he thinks are most at home with that venue yeah. and getting on with it, not the one that's necessarily sat there and caught a load of fish because you might have caught them on a certain tactic or distance or method that isn't going to be the the main thing so what what's so. the actual like so you got there for like say like started practicing on a monday you're into like midweek on a wednesday what's a typical day involved what time are you getting up and then yeah so you... just a typical day in hungary unfortunately around the lake there wasn't that much accommodation and one thing that we've learned over the last 20 years is you want to have good accommodation somewhere right. comfortable somewhere nice um, and we were about 40, 45 minutes away. Oh, right, okay. Nice big house, so with grounds that you could just spread out, and there was a barn for all the bait and electric outside for the fridges yeah. and the freezers, which, again, Darren Bickerton's the, the, the man there. Yeah. Um, and, and so you, we'd be getting up at half five, right, sorting okay. the bait out, this, yeah. that, and everything else, ground bait, everything loaded in the van, to the venue with a cheeky little stop at a nice bakery yeah, that we boy. found. Pan and chocolates well, and lattes. I heard they did nice pizzas, but I didn't what, um, in the breakfast? participate. <laughs> I don't believe um, you. What yeah. are you lying for? <laughs> That's it. And, and obviously you get to your, your, your box nice and early. Yeah. Um, you're not allowed in, yeah, in, yeah. in official training. They let you in and just do, do what you want. And then it's just preparing and 
you know, just going through what your sort of mission is that day to, to, to fish and to, and to try and prove things. And do you have like little stops of like you fish for an hour and then do you have a stop and like get Not together? Not really, we tend just... to fish for the four hours. Right. Um, but like this week, uh, the, the week's just gone in hungry. Mark would have your bleak fishing. Three of you start for bleak for two hours, right. change to a slider. Three of you start on a slider, change to bleak. Three of you start on a slider and then, you know, you're on the pole and, and this, that and the other. And the way we've got it to practicing now, we, we glean a lot more information rather than just sat there trying to beat each other. Right, okay. Um, and it, it's very important, mate. It's I, very important. But... I remember, like, my favourite things, so you're probably the same, Rich, like in lockdown when you used to do your, like, uh, match memories. Yeah, yeah. It was so yeah. good. Yeah. Is it yeah. an actual thing that they'd be on, like, recorders and, like, binoculars and, like, looking at, like... What, oh, what... yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. That's you, your big yeah. do for that, Rich, yeah, isn't it? It's we, over we, here. It, it, it's, you know, it's frightening. It is frightening. Um, you know, they'll set up a video camera and... In Holland, uh, on the Lagerwart Canal, we should have won the World Championships again when Slovakia won it. Um, I was second individual, and the Russians videoed us, set a video up behind us. <coughs> and I'm not going to say who or what, but one of our anglers... Go on, you can do on this, Will. <laughs> one of our anglers <laughs> did... We, we stumbled across the method, and again, it was Stevie, feeding like raw joker, just in a little bit of grey lean, catching these bream. Monday, Tuesday, top weights were doing this. Wednesday, one of our anglers did it in the middle, which was decided by the team and the management. Let's, it wasn't his fault, it wasn't the manager, nothing. But the Russians set up a video camera behind us and videoed yeah. it, and they've obviously gone back, watched it. And although Russia as a team didn't beat us, but they drew next to us in two sections over the weekend, fed it the same, which made our approach less effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also a Russian won it individually, which beat me right so just it? that but how do you hide you have yeah. to practice you have to try things you have to try something and it works and you have to get someone else to try it to just to underline it and to make sure and it's very very hard and this is why england if we don't twig it till late we're brilliant and we win because we don't have time to sort of give it away right and yeah, these yeah. other teams are the same yeah, yeah you know it's not just us if these other teams know what to do, they quite often give it away because they have to, they can't not do it all week and then just hope that it's still the case that that's the best way to fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to try it and, you know, sometimes it can be given away. And that, again, goes back to having the good people on the bank. The Mark Downs, the Darren Bickertons, the Nathan Hughes. So experienced like anglers that have been there, seen it, done it. And if, if he's sat there doing it, they know what he's doing. Right, get uh, and it's vitally important. So we're the same as well. You like respect like Darren and uh, Nathan. They'll be like looking at other teams. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They'll be off. You know, basically, an average day is one of them will stay with us. Yeah, just in case you know we need so or get some tape over yeah. the camera like that. How's Matt Goffrey <laughs> catching one a chuck again today? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Go and see what he's got on the hook. Go and see how Not far over depth and yeah. this, that, and everything else. And you so, know. So like after your practice is finished, like you've had your four hours, do you get all your gear away and then go in, like have your team meeting or do you have your team so meeting there with fresh in your head or? A, a lot of it will depend on climate. Where we've been, right. it was mid thirties and the humidity was through the roof. So, so Matt, Matt's had a brolly up in fact, a tipex on every yeah, day. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's <laughs> it. But um, it was a case of, we did fish on a few days when there was a bit of a breeze. Yeah. But you know, in that heat, you've got to just make sure you're all right, you're hydrated, you're back you know, have a shower and then you can do your gear for two or three hours. But, you know, no stones left unturned, nothing. Um, so what and, time are you finishing of a night time then? So normally, I mean, this, this week, a particular day, you'd be up at half five, leaving the house at like half six to the venue for half seven. Uh, the training is 10 till two. Right. Um, and then we'd be getting back between five and six quick shower, do some gear, out for a meal, or Nathan's quite a good cook, or a very good cook, should I say. Go on, Nathan. Yeah. Right. Um, he'd cook, and then we'd have a meeting, you to bed at 10, half 10. And then do it all um, again. And then the same again. And that's why, you know, like, come the Sunday night, the come down, and the sort of, pff, but, you know, if you've got a 1,200 mile drive the next day, yeah, you can't mate. quite, totally relax and that's why when I come back from these events mate I quite often have a week 10 days just, just like away from chill. it because you've got to 
talk, talk us through the feeling, Will. Obviously, on that first day, on a Saturday, when you win your section, what's it like? Obviously, that night then going into like the the next <clears> day. <throat> yeah, I mean, again, for me, I've fortunately I've been in the position quite a few yeah, mom. or a few times where I've won my section the first day, um, and the individual thing never comes into my mind. It's always about the team. Yeah, it's about the team, and and ultimately, and you know, people laugh and they say, "Oh, yeah, I've heard it all before." And, I'm not going to sit here and say individual medals aren't nice. Yeah. You know, I'm glad I've won the World Championships. Oh, I'm mate. glad I've won the Europeans. Yeah. You know, and I'm proud of the fact that I'm the only angler, as far as I know, in world match fishing to have every medal from every event. Brilliant. Bronze, silver, gold, individual and team in world and Europeans. I'm Amazing. proud of that, but it's the team. The team. And, you know, really winning your section is brilliant because you feel like you've done the job for the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so it's about, you know, and one thing we sort of overlooked is the fact that Mark's made me captain, and I love that. I love, ever since I was, I fished my first Division One National when I was 12. Fished my first Winter League when I was eight. Yes. I've been brought up in the camaraderie side of team fishing. You know, like, I got your back, you got mine. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. we'll just, you know, yeah. if you can win, and I, you know, if I've drawn not so well and I can do okay, it's about how we do collectively, not individually. Yeah. And that's how I've always lived my fishing life. I like fishing individual matches where I can just go, right, yeah, Mom. I'm going to smash you to bits today. First or last, I don't really care, you yeah, know, like yeah. but team fishing, it's you know, that's what I live for. Right, the, the, okay. And I love I love the togetherness, the camaraderie, um, not just in the team, but the team and the management, the whole unit. I just love it and, and you know that's that's the side of fishing I wouldn't swap for, for the world. Yeah. Um, but, you know, th there is, I take a lot of pride in my individual performances. Um, the first day this year, the world rankings came out, the European rankings came out just before we went, and luckily I'm still top of the European rankings. But the guy, Brilliant. Stefan Potelek, who is top of the world rankings, I drew next to the first day right, of okay. the Europeans. You know, we're 10 metres apart, and you see, I saw it after on Facebook, oh, you know, like, guys were putting on there that were there and watching, oh, Europe's number one against world number one, how's it going to go? You know, and he came there's like... There's only one result, Will, isn't there? No, yeah, there's not, he's on, a fantastic angler, yeah, and he's man. a lovely, lovely lad. I've yeah. been to France, and I've watched him fish, I've seen him fish, and he is Proper. a machine. Right. Lovely lad, catches loads of fish. But on that day, it went my way. Yeah. Um, we started for bleak, we all caught a few bleak. I went out on a slider and started catching skimmers. He went out on a slider and it didn't really happen. Right. That's not a mark on him as an angler, you know as well as I do. Yeah. Yeah, everyone yeah. can beat everyone in fishing and sometimes it comes down to just that little bit of, you know, little bit of rubber the green and the right decision at the right time. Um, but again, it was Mark Downs. After 50 minutes, Mark comes so we've down. Seen he, some... Mark Downs came down to me and this is this is where He's worth his weight in gold yeah. for me. Luckily, he was running my section. I'm fishing for Bleak. Lad on my left is catching Bleak. Stefan on my right, who's renowned as a little fish angler, is catching Bleak. Mark's come down, and he knows I've been catching well on a slider all week, and I'm confident. Yeah. I'm up for it. That And, and the game-changing yeah. fish are out there. They're not these Bleak on the inside. You're maxing out at, like, six kilo, and you needed to catch, albeit I was seven kilo, but... Uh, and Mark's like, right, you're 35, 40 bleak ahead. You've bought yourself a 10-minute window to go on a slider. Do it. Not what do you yeah, think, yeah, you know, like, amazing. do it. I know you want to do it. I'm like that with my whip straight away. Just as he was going, do it. I'm Charlie picking, Ho! <laughs> picked the slider on up, chucked it out. First chuck, caught a pound and a half skimmer, and that's yes. the end of it. And, you know, I managed to catch, I think, 14 or 15 skimmers, a nice Carasio, and managed to win the section just. You know, but the second day, again... It was Mark. Steve Hemingway, unfortunately, wasn't fishing the second day. Um, he'd had a bit of a hard one up in A section, but again, that's not his fault. The way that the practice felt, we were on A and B Monday and Tuesday, which was the shallower end, and C, D and E are down in the body of the lake where it's deeper. And Steve drew A where we hadn't practiced since Monday. Yeah. Very, very difficult, though we'd had eyes and ears on the bank. Um, but he still did well, you know, like he still, you know, held his own, but unfortunately he wasn't fishing the second day. And the second day, I drew in a nice area in E. We practiced not far from it. And it was a case of, look, we're fifth. We need to win some sections. 
and I just started on a slider and caught really well from the word go. Brilliant. Um, had a nice match, 13 and a half kilo, 40 odd skimmers and two little carp. Lovely that. That's what um, you want in, a, in a, like that kind of thing, that environment, yeah. European champs, yeah. world but champs, you want that. You know that, and you'll know, you know, if you can recall from when you were in the, in the youth setup, it's a lonely place. And I, I remember Steve Ringer saying on one of his that when you get in your box and you're there, it's the loneliest, it's the loneliest place on planet fishing. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. is, you know, because you, you know, you've got a big crowd and the expectation, and you're surrounded by, you know, world number ones there. Bloody hell! I ain't going to get a bigger test than this. Yeah. And do you feel under it, pressure? Do you ever get like? Do you, I, do you I, feel I, like I, I, yeah, I always feel the pressure. Sometimes I struggle to sleep, and I'm the kind of person that. Once I'm awake, that is it. There's no nodding off again. It's right. two o'clock, three o'clock, four, oh, whenever it is, I'm awake. And immediately I'm like, don't start thinking, don't start thinking, what about this slider? What about that? And it's like over. Yeah. Just get up, tie some hooks up and have a cup of coffee and wait for everyone else to get up. But Steve Emigray's normally up then anyway. So oh, okay, go on. He's a, he's a real <laughs> early riser. But, but no, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it's just brilliant, mate. And, there's there's no better feeling, I suppose, I don't know, but it's like winning a fish show or something. You know, you're there against the best of the best and the elite and you've won. Yeah, yeah. You've beat them. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's just nice. It's oh, just nice. Brilliant, and, mate. You know, the, the, you know, individual medals and titles come and go, but as a team, that's where, you know, I, I, I want to win. Because, you know, I've fished with lads like, I, I mean, I, when Steve Sanders was the manager of the, the junior team, Matt Goffrey was in his team and I yes. went and yeah, helped yeah. coach for a couple of years. And, you know, this is a little tiny lad that, you know, now he's in the he's, England he's won, team. He's won like three him. youth titles, hasn't he? Like yeah. Three yeah. world it's youth awesome, titles. Matt. It's just ridiculous. Frightening. frightening, as they all are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't get to that level. Um, I bet it's nice for you arena. to see this, like, young blood coming up as well. I love so, it. So, the, the future of it yeah. then, obviously, uh, what, what is the future like for you? Um, obviously... You're going to carry on with the international scene for as long as it'll continue. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll eventually change to like the open scene, like the fish shows and whatever? Uh, or... I don't think so, mate. Just gonna... I don't think so, purely because, you know, I've seen it with anglers and I'm not silly. Yeah. I'm 48 now. Um, I realistically want to fish, you know, for a good more 10 years. Yeah, mum. Um, obviously, there's odd outside influences like our business here. Yeah. Ultimately, this is what provides for my family. Yeah. Um, and if and when the time comes when I've got to take a more active role here, we're lucky here. We've got a brilliant management team. Yeah. Um, brilliant staff. Yeah. Um, my dad's still well into it. Yeah, mum. Um, and it gives me the sort of freedom to go and pursue these international events and spend two weeks in Hungary. Yeah. Um, but if and when the time comes when I've got to have a more hands-on approach here, then that may well affect it. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I want to fish for England for another 10 years. I want to get this current crop, you know, in and in and that. And I don't know. I don't know. Just see what the future holds. Maybe a bit of management, a bit of coaching, as far as that level's concerned, because... Do you think I enough just... been being done over here to bring the current crop of, like, young anglers through and everything will to compete on the international scene? Again, mate, you've got to look at the like... popularity of these big commercial events and yeah. the amount of money that's won. Um, but you have got a lot of silverfish matches, which are, are, are a step towards international fishing, but a lot of them are still pellets, soft yeah. pellets for skimmers and bream, which isn't allowed in international fishing. Yeah. But, you know, you've got to look at the success of the census final. I mean, yeah. Mark does a fantastic job yeah, running yeah. that. There's 30-odd teams every year, teams coming from the continent, you know, teams practising for a week, mm. all taking it serious. So, you know... Listen, England compared to the rest of uh, you know mainland Europe is a com is a is a separate. We've animal. got it all, haven't we? Literally got yeah. whatever you want to do fishing wise. You know, we've got something to yeah. cover it. Yeah, yeah, and, and the and the snowball of the commercial fishing has just got so big and powerful in England now yeah. that it's a job to sort of compete with it with any sort of aspects of I other know, fishing it's... like it, world fishing, but. You get off the train in France and everyone there from France, Holland, Belgium, Italy, Poland, Germany, you know, Hungary, Slovakia, Romania, Bulgaria, 
Spain, Portugal, I can't Finland, list that many Denmark. countries will stop it. You're me heading. But they oh, all well, live. You're making them up. They you're all them live up. for international fishing. Right, okay. World and international fishing. All their domestic fishing is world rules, four hour matches, six bait limits, and that's how they fish. But how we are as a nation and how we've done, obviously, the likes of yourself yeah, in particular, we're still, we're not a million miles away. You know what I mean? No, Every no, time we go, no, you're always competing, no, we're still, aren't you? we're still, it's you know, a testament to... in my mind, I think, you know, we've got, you know. So how do you think it'd be if we just literally just focus on that 30 metre limit rules and Blood Woman Joker? You know what I mean? It'd like, it'd be frightening. But It would be frightening, mate, because, you know, you know, and I'm not just saying it because you're here. If you'd have gone down the world route, mm. the sky's the limit. And, you know, you've I'm got. I'm not paid him to say that, folks. <laughs> no, <laughs> we've but, seen your casting earlier. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah don't yeah. do that. Are you sure? We're yeah, sure. The international <laughs> events. There's not many trees about, so <laughs> it, it'd be all right. No, there's tape. <laughs> but you know, you look at, you know, and I had this conversation on a on a little podcast I did with Angling Trust when I arrived back from Hungary, and it's something that is. I'm very defensive about because I hear it all the time. So and so, so and so could just walk into that England team right, and okay. fish tomorrow. Right. No. If it was on a six foot deep rowing course full of carp, yeah, they could. If it was on the River Mincio, where it's six metres deep and you're either fishing an eight metre bolo with a 20 gram float, or you're trying to fish where the bottom's nice and the rocks finish on a 20 gram slider, top and bottom, they couldn't do it. No. If anglers like Jamie Hughes, Bagger, Christian Jones, Paul Holland, um, if 10 years ago their route wasn't fish show and dominating these big events was the England team, yeah. would they be good enough now to fish England? Yeah. 100%. And we'd have yeah. 15 anglers vying for their places instead of seven or eight. Right. But also in the same fact, as much as the commercial side has taken good anglers away from the England team, so is the feeder team. Right. You look at the feeder okay. team. Yeah. Steve Ringer. Right. Yeah, yeah. Ten years ago, if he said, oh, "I'm going to fish for the float team," he, he could quite easily have done it. Yeah. Lee Kerry already has. Yeah. You know, anglers like Will Freeman, Mick Viles, yeah. Rob Wooten. Um, you, you know, just all of them. You know, they're 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 masters of their craft and they're good anglers and good anglers can catch fish yeah but it's different international fishing to to commercial fishing is completely different yeah and i'm not sitting here judging anybody no mate each to not. their own yeah each to their own yeah but you can't do both you have to make a decision and you know i appreciate if i went to you know lindholm or partridge I can't compete against these young lads that do it all the time and that, you know. But well, after you smash Bagger up next, Peg, I'm yeah. one of them, mate. Remember Just that? Just got lucky. And you that remember day. it too, Bagger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's but, me, mate. but, you know, and, and it's just, you know, you need that, that, um, you need that sort of apprenticeship in whatever it is you're doing. And yeah. then you start to reap the benefits of it. Like, Matt Goffrey is in the international scene. Yeah. Like Cameron Hughes is in the international scene. Yeah. Like Christian Jones is in the commercial. domestic mm. it, domestic yeah. commercial yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. Like Will Freeman is in the feeder thing. Yeah. All of a sudden he's broke into the team. Bang. That'd be it. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know the Rob Buttons of this to that. They're reaping the benefits of reward and doing their apprenticeship. Yeah. And you know they're into it and they're they're you know they they're, they're all just machines. But you need to. And, and like I say, the only thing I get defensive of, like I say, each their own, but when people say, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so could just walk into that England team. Yeah, yeah. That's like, like me that. saying, well, Steve Emingray could just turn up and win Fisher Mania. Yeah. He could, he's good enough, but he, need, he would need to go and fish the commercials for a, a while to get back into it. And the same as these very good anglers that fish commercially would have to fish world rules and tactics and competitions for a while just to build up there you know but the last thing i'm doing mate i own a commercial fishery i've got a fishing tackle shop that sells yeah, yeah, commercial yeah. goods yeah i love commercial fishery i love sitting here catching carp but my thing is the international thing and that yeah, is my priority and that comes first and foremost imagine how daunting it would be from catching f1s and all the shotted rigs that deep will to going and like the river drava 
yeah, yeah. 50 gram flat floats like that, you yeah, get yeah. like seven or eight seconds. Like, yeah, yeah. Th- yeah. Mate, it's like yeah, it's ridiculous, different, isn't it? different, different world. And you know, it, it, it <laughs> I, I just, I just love it, mate. You know, yeah. the, the float side of the international thing and the feeder side as well. You know, like I fish yeah. a few feeder That's events. It. Bell Beach, haven't you? You've been yeah, Bell Beach yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely it's love it. I just love catching fish, mate, yeah. at what, the end of the day. What were the tactics? Obviously, you mentioned it was a bit, bit of bleak, bit of slider fishing. What, mm. what was it going? A bit more technical over there. So, obviously, you've got your bleak um, and a what, very... The, Bobby Bleak or no, River no, 7 No, no, no. Well, they were like... Not River 7 Bleak. 65, 60, 65, 70 to a kilo. Oh, right. So, okay. they're nice size fish. Yeah, yeah. 12... 12 gram plus um and just going back to last year in Karoosh bleak were important um there was quite a few bleak there and this is where having anglers from a different sort of not era but a different sort of background coming into the squad of Simon Willsmore he's right. fit, he's lived he's in Italy for yeah, yeah, yeah. 12 years he's fished for bleak he knows little things that you do and little things that the Italians do and and tiny, tiny little things that make big differences yeah, like they have done today. Yeah. Little tiny things where you have your rod, it makes a difference. Yeah. With bleak fishing, about fine mainline shotting patterns. And having Simon in the team has brought everyone on at their bleak fishing. Oh, well. Now brilliant. we're competing. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying we weren't before, but we're all a lot better, not just because of Simon, yeah. but a lot of what Simon showed us, we've then taken, remoulded into our own little thing, and we've got better at that. Yeah, yeah. And it's having people in the team. So obviously bleak fishing was very important, yeah. but accuracy of slider fishing was the most important thing in Hungary. Accuracy of casting, float position, and ultimately feeding a ball on top of your float. At the start, we were feeding five... I think about five litres, um, with quite a bit of bait in it, corn, hemp, dead maggots, casters, not so much joker, because we didn't want to encourage little fish and a few worms, and then just up in the worms as we went along. But uh, you, you could literally cast your slider out, and we put that in at the beginning, um, and you wanted it to go in, you know, if it could go in two metres square, perfect. Right. But then, and this is where it became an obsession of mine and the rest of the teams because you'd be fishing in practice, you chuck your slider out and the thing to do is to feed two to four balls. Bang, 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 bang. Full of worms. Then you fish for, might be 10 minutes, might be half hour. You catch two or three and then the, the bites and indications like Dwayne, then you do it, do again. it again. And what you find is you chuck your, your float out and basically I was clipped up. Yeah. Um, 11 turns past 30 metres. So I'd do... I would stick up like you would on a feeder to the 30 metres to the tip. Yeah. Mark it with a census line pen. Back wind 11 turns, clip up. Right, okay. So now I wind 11 turns and I'm at my white mark between my ring and my reel. Yeah. Cast my slider out, hit my clip, rod down, white mark comes in. Now I'm 30 metres. Might be, but because you've sticked up with the depth, the length of your rod sort of cancels that out, so yep. you're fishing 30 metres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your float will pop up, now it's time to feed those two to four balls. Yeah. And you go, boom, 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 and they all go within a foot of your float. <laughs> and you go, that was good. And your float just goes, <laughs> and you're like, clunk. Oh, Next mate. time, you chuck your float out and you sink your line, you go, boom, oh, that was four foot short. Right. Boom, that was two foot too far. Boom bit short, boom, oh, that was bang on. Is, it, is that what it was like, yeah? And it's like, but it's no different to a pole. Yeah, yeah, You know, you put a ball in, when you're fishing for skimmers with ground bait and worms on the pole, you put a ball in and put your float on top of it, it goes, boom. If you put your float in and put a ball a metre to the right, you're not going to catch one. And it, in the end, all the team, and it was quite funny because you see, like, I'd be fishing <laughs> like that and Matt would be next to me. I see his waggler there and it's just like, Bosh! Like that. And it's like, wow, got one. <laughs> and it was an obsession with the accuracy. And right. ultimately, the, the most important thing was plumbing up accurately. So I'd have a plumbing rod with just, you know, the same waggler, um, uh, like a barrel weight with yeah. a clip swivel so I can put it on the line retention on the rod. Everything's the same. Plumb up, absolutely dead 
dead depth. The float's overshot, so it sinks if it's yeah. too shallow and, and, and obviously comes out. Absolutely dead depth. And when you're sticking up, the accuracy you can achieve is, yeah, is frightening. Yeah, yeah. Everything's Imagine, the same. Yeah. And, and to cut, you know, just to show the importance of, you know, I'm fishing at 30 metres and I'm fishing, I know I'm fishing 15 centimetres over depth. And the second day, literally after 40 minutes, the wind just died a little bit and it was lovely and the floats just lifted and I whack Eesh. and it's like, it's come off. I'm like, Ugh. and I know I want to fish 10 centimetres over depth, but because it's been windy and towing, that extra five centimetres just anchors your float a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Just gives you a little bit, that window of it being over your bait for a minute becomes two minutes. And all of a sudden you're catching more fish. Second day, it's virtually gone flat calm. And I'm like, wound in, just moved my stop knock down 10 centimetres, chucked it out. I didn't, hardly missed another bite and never lost another fish. Yeah, and I know, and that's the sort of accuracy. And that would, if you said to me, I'm going to Lake Decedo, I'm fishing a slider, give me some tips. I'd say feed accurately and plumb up accurately. Right, and okay. fish like you're fishing a pole. You know, too many people think, well, it's slider, I'll just put a foot of line on the bottom. And, yeah, and away we but go. But it's more technical so, than that. You're fishing for the fish, you're not... To get the accuracy with the balls of ground weight, Willie, you're, you're snipping like bits of elastic off the catapult yeah, yeah. and getting them yeah, banged definitely, on and everything. Definitely, Trying to stick to the same ratio, ground bait to soil. Yeah. Because obviously the weight of the ball and trying to make the ball... And again, it goes back to when I used to fish here with ground bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make the ball as big as you can, the yeah. same size. You pull your catapult back till it locks in line with your far bank marker and let it go, Yeah. theoretically, it, it should always go in the same place. Yeah. But you have to take into account, if you use 50-50 ground bait and soil measurement-wise, five litres, five litres, mix it together, the next day, Mark says to you, right, I want you to use 70% soil. Your ground bait's going to be heavier. Yeah. Then it's not going to go the same distance, so you need a... So I had yeah, catapults yeah. for 30 metres for soil. 30 metres for 50-50, 35 metres for soil, 35 metres for 27 metres, and all these different... Uh, and people say to me, what, three weeks before the Europeans, you didn't go fishing? Because you're prepping and what, getting what, everything done. You know, and just this lake's about that. a foot shallow. I used to sit on this peg every night, just pull my van down when the gate's locked and everyone's gone, 30 metres with my plumbing rod and just bump. Boom, practice, practice, every practice. single time until it becomes second nature. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and where did I get that from? Experience, but Alan Scotton was the best I've ever seen at it. Right, okay. And it was a case of watching Alan, being away with him and going, I need to be like that. Right. If I want to be the next yeah, Alan yeah. Scotton and this team to be as successful as it has been, we need to be like that. And I remember watching Alan, and it was one of the best displays of fishing I ever saw at, at Valencia in Hungary again. And, you know, he's fishing like 40 metres, and it's within two foot of his float every single time. And he wins the World Championships, and you're like... That's why. He won that. He yeah. didn't draw well. He didn't... It wasn't, it wasn't a bit of a, oh, I'm on A1, thanks for that. It was in the middle, took the mick, uh, just he won it, and that right. was. And I came away. I think that was like 2007. Thinking, that's what. That's I what need I to wanted. do that. And, right. and I'm not saying I am. Yeah. But and, and and along with all the lads in the team, we're all a lot. Yeah, man. A lot, lot better at it. Did Long Pole come into it at all, Will? Over a little or? bit, a little bit. There was odd places where you could catch small skimmers, especially in the shallows. Yeah. Um, A and B, and through the week we had an odd last hour last half hour where there were some decent skimmers and some carp even all oh, right okay but the problem you've got in that environment and you can use it to your advantage like i did the first day is if no one tries it nobody yeah it's yeah, very yeah. rare you get some bloke go right i'm going on the pole with an hour to go <laughs> and if he goes clunk everybody's on it yeah, yeah yeah but because people are either fishing for bleak or catching on a slider no one wants to chance their arm at, you know, but the first day it worked for me because everybody's fishing for bleak. Right. I'll chuck my slider out, it's like clunk. And, I suppose and everyone's the, like... Uh, your bank uh, runners come into play, innit, when they're yeah. killing stuff. And then if they go on the slider and don't catch, yeah. not only are they behind me, but they're behind everyone else that stayed on bleak. Right. So then it's like... It's mad, isn't it? 
the mind, not mind games, but the mechanics of the match and yeah. the way it all unfolds, it's, 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 it's addictive, mate. I just, I, I, you know, so you always want to go with. back, but I'd, I'd love to just rewind and go back to them two weeks in Hungary, just do it all again. Bloody because hell, there's so sense. much to it, mate. That's so amazing. much. But I'm not saying there's not commercial fishing. There is. I know how much just there is like, to it. Just give it one of them and yeah. like what you pull. That's <laughs> it. Commercial as well. What you yeah. About? Yeah. Hey. I don't think so. But it, it, you know, it, it's just it's what I want to do, mate. It's what I live for, and you know, well, but, wish you every success in the future, mate. You know, mm. no one deserves it more. The time and dedication you put into it. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Like I say, it's the it's the youngins in the team, and yeah, mum. You know, it's just, it's brilliant to see. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll take my hat off to them, mate. They work hard, they practice, they prepare, as we all do. Yeah. You know, the Steve Emigrays, the Simon Wilsmores, you know, Sean Ashby, myself, you know, but the young, the young guns, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a, it's a daunting environment. You know, you've got big crowds, pressure. Yeah. You know, not just pressure from the crowds or the manager or your teammates, but your sponsors back home. There's eight, and, and I take my hat off to each and every one of them, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely proud, proud, proud of them. No, oh, brilliant, mate. Hope you're going to smash loads more in years to come, Will. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. No problem. Thanks a lot, mate. Loved it, mate. Legend. Right, so we hope you are enjoying the video that you're watching, if not have just watched. But what we'd also like you to see is the packages that we include for our more technical, informational stuff, where what we can bring to you is all we pretty much know about the technical side and our match style side of fishing. And I'm what not we in have, this bit. <laughs> you are, of course you are in this bit. We have two sides of things. We have the basic package that for $4.99, you can watch us fish live matches, a QA every month, and additional stuff from Matty Doors with live matches and more technical stuff on his side. Or we have the all access package where you can literally see technical insights live matches from again from us but also from some of the best anglers flipping on the planet i mean we treat it as three days coaching for us and we go out and we show you what we're learning for anglers like darren cox andy bennett their ship to name but a few well worth a look if you fancy having a little bit more fishing content to watch